Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Wendy and I'm with Inspire Ministries and I'm so glad that you are here today. Today I want to share with you something that I have been teaching, a class that I lead on Thursday nights called The Red Letters of Jesus. The last couple weeks we have been going through the Beatitudes, which is found in Matthew 5, and today I want to talk to you just about one of those Beatitudes, one that I think that we have every reason to investigate a little bit further today, one that we do not talk about in our modern 21st century, and a word that I believe that we have every bit of reason to pay attention to in our life and ask ourselves the question how we can adapt it in our everyday living. That beatitude is the third beatitude, when Jesus says, blessed are those who are humble. One of the versions actually says, blessed are those who are meek. And that's what I want to talk to you today about is being meek. Being a someone who is meek and mild and humble. Again, it's something that we don't talk about very often, but something that I want to talk about today. When I think about this word meek, you know who actually comes to mind first and foremost is my husband. My husband is one of the meekest and most humble people that you will actually ever meet. And as I was going through preparations for talking about meekness, I thought the entire time this is talking about my husband. One of the things that I have been teaching my grandsons as of late, and they're just little bitty guys right now, but I've been teaching them to be gentle, to be humble and to be meek. And I believe that we should be raising men who are meek and mild and humble, ones who are gentle. I think the word meek actually gets lost in translation in our modern day. And so I really want to talk to you today about what it means to be meek. This one is hard. I believe it's hard, especially because it is so completely and entirely opposite of everything that is in us in our natural state. We don't talk, again, uh, we don't talk about meek very often. It is anti-worldview. And if you are a follower in Jesus, as I am a follower of Jesus, we have to begin to think from a kingdom viewpoint, from a heavenly perspective. We have to look through the lens of a biblical perspective. We have no business looking at the world through a worldview. Now, to be meek, by definition, means simply mild, gentle, and humble. It can further, though, be expressed as the character of one who has the passion of resentment under control and who is therefore tranquil and untroubled. Can you imagine a state in which you live where people are untroubled? I think that that is the antithesis of our world today. I believe that we look out in our world and we are filled with anxiety over the things that we see. And yet, to be meek means that we are tranquil, humble, that we are gentle, that we are mild, that we are untroubled. The Aramaic word for the word meek is this word, and I'll go ahead and put it on the screen. It's pronounced in a way that I can't pronounce, but it's spelled M-A-K-E-E-K-H-E-H. -E -E and it implies being both gentle and flexible. Flexible is a very interesting definition of this word. Look at this word flexible. By definition, the word flexible means capable of being bent, usually without breaking, adaptable, willing or disposed to yielding, and pliable. Meekness is patience in the rejection of injuries. It is quite the opposite of sudden anger or malice or long harbored vengeance. According to my commentary, which is Matthew Henry, one of the greatest commentaries, I believe, of our time, said this, the meek are those who quietly submit to God, who can bear insult, are silent or return a soft answer, who in their patience keep possession of their own souls when they can scarcely keep possession of anything else. These meek ones, he says, are happy even in this world. Meekness promotes wealth, comfort, safety, even in the world. 
unquote. When we think of its placement here in the list of Beatitudes, we see that it comes after two that are very, very important. The first one is being poor in spirit. The very first Beatitude, Jesus says, Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. It's very interesting, this poor in spirit, because oftentimes we think that that means that we just have to walk around depressed all the time or destitute, or we just have to walk around feeling just saddened all the time. That is not what being poor in spirit means. What being poor in spirit means is that we empty ourselves of ourself. There is no more of Wendy and me. It's always empty for Jesus to do the filling of the Holy Spirit, for Jesus to do the filling of himself so that we can look more like Jesus, right? So it comes after being poor in spirit. The second one is God blesses those who mourn. God blesses those who mourn. Now, again, we might look at this on its face and think that Jesus just wants us sad all the time, and that's not what he is saying. A closer investigation of this word mourn means that we are to mourn after sin. We are to mourn for sin. We are to mourn when the Holy Spirit is grieved. We're to mourn when we are steeped in sin that we can't get out of. And we should mourn after the sin that we see in the world. And so the first one that we see in this line of Beatitudes is blessed is the one who is poor in spirit. And then blessed is the one who mourns, mourns after sin. And then then comes the one who is to be blessed because he is humble or he is meek. We see that there is a distinct line of how these are spelled out in scripture. We recognize that we are poor in spirit, then we mourn after sin. We mourn for sin because of the sinfulness that's in us and in the world around us. And now we are humble and meek in spirit. You and I, if we are true believers in Jesus, you and I, we are a new creation. We are a new creation and we belong to an entirely new kingdom, a heavenly kingdom. It's like Jesus uses these character traits as a way to say, no, listen, the kingdom of God is not like the things that you see. It's not like the rest of the world. The kingdom of heaven is different. The kingdom of God is different. And then it's like Jesus says, I am not like that. Blessed are the meek, the ones who are like me. And think about these Beatitudes. They get more difficult as they go along. You see, it might be okay that we understand this concept of emptying ourselves of ourselves and mourning for sin. But then when Jesus begins to tell us what we are to fill ourselves with, this humility and this meekness, it gets a little bit more difficult. This one, particularly about humility and about meekness, might be the one hardest that we have seen in the lineup of Beatitudes so far. This one causes us to do some hard heart work, some soul searching, some self examination. And there is always this difficult work of self examination to do. You know, we can look at some of the greats in the scriptures and see meekness properly demonstrated. When you look at the life of Abraham, for instance, he did things without complaining. When God ordered him and assigned him a specific task, he did it without complaining. And this is what it means to be meek. Moses was another character who demonstrated great amounts of meekness. He is actually described in the scriptures as the meekest in all of the earth. Scripture says, now the man Moses was very meek more than any other people who were on the face of the earth at the time. And this is according to Numbers 12, 3 in the New Living Translation. He had a very low conception of himself and a readiness to humble himself before the Lord and before men. David was another one who was meek. He knew that he had been called to be king, but look how he humbly placed himself under the leadership of King Saul for a time, even in the midst of unfair treatment. We just don't see that today. We do not see this kind of meekness demonstrated in our world. 
Another one that we can see in the Old Testament is Jeremiah. He was another meek one. This prophet had one of the toughest messages to deliver. While others were saying good things to tickle the ears of their hearers, Jeremiah did quite the opposite. Jeremiah was what could be described in our modern day and age as a non-cooperative person because he had a different and a difficult message. His message ultimately was to be a tester of metals, that he might determine the quality of people, according to Jeremiah 6.27. And he was called to those who wouldn't listen, according to Jeremiah 7.27, just like Isaiah, according to Jeremiah 6.5. But Jeremiah knew that the certainty of rejection was no degree to interfere with his duty of proclamation. He was going to do what God had called him to do, and he did it. And he was meek as he did it. Meekness is not a natural quality. I want to say that right away, is that meekness is not in our natural man. It's not a natural quality, and it is something that is made possible only by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You and I can't be meek on our own. We need the Spirit's leading and we need the Spirit's teaching in our life in order to know how meekness is possible. Now, to understand meekness correctly, we have to know what it's not as well as what it is. Meekness is not indolence, which actually just means slothful or lazy, inactive, relatively benign, or slow or sluggish. It's not this means of having a lack of strength and determination and passion and zeal. And it's not niceness. Can I say that? It, it's not this niceness. It's not weakness in character. It's not having a spirit of compromise or a peace at any price. That's not what being meek means. What having meekness means is having great strength, but it's also having great peace and joy in the midst of having that great strength. It's having peace at the same time having authority and power. You see, Jesus died on the cross and he was raised with this resurrection power that as a New Testament believer, you and I possess as well. We have that same resurrection power that raised him from the dead living within us. And so we have no excuse to live without power and authority as we are living with meekness. There is this well-known hymn, and it's got this really great line in it called Stay the Angry Blow, and it speaks to this subject of meekness. It's written by Cecil Francis Alexander, and the words are in part, and I'm going to say this to you, the words in part are, then we may stay the angry blow, then we may check the hasty word, give gentle answers back again, and fight a battle for the Lord. It's staying the angry blow. Do you know what that means? It means when someone talks bad about you or someone has something negative to, to, to do towards you or to persecute you or to attack you, it means that you don't seek to retaliate because you are meek. You have this gentleness. You have this love about you. You have this forbearance about you, this patience about you that allows you to stay the angry blow. It allows you not to live in a place of needing to retaliate, of needing to be defensive, of needing to, to defend your stance as a Christian. You have no business doing that, and either do I, because we live in meekness, because we live the way that Jesus lived. We live with humility. We live with the distinction of gentleness and characterized by meekness. Take a look at Proverbs 22.11 out of the New King James Version. It says this, He who loves purity of heart and has grace on his lips, the king will be his friend. So we know that Jesus, King Jesus, will be our friend when we are someone who loves from a purity of heart and we have grace upon the words that we speak. 
a meek man is not someone who is ever playing the side of defensive. A meek man doesn't worry about himself and what other people might think of him or might do to him. He's let go of all of that. To be truly meek, as Pastor Martin Lloyd-Jones says, is it means this. It means that we no longer worry about protecting ourselves because we see in us there's nothing worth defending. You see, you and I, we defend the gospel. We defend the reputation of Jesus, but we don't protect and defend ourselves. And this is a huge one. This is huge for us because being defensive is part of our human nature. It's just who we are. It is ingrained in us. It is so a part of our natural man. But the meek person, listen, the meek person is not defensive. All of that is gone. All of that is let go of when we give our lives to Christ. Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to wake up one morning and we're going to be transformed into a brand new person. It means that this happens slowly over time. When we look at Jesus, when we hold him in high regard, when we put him in a position of being the center key component of our life, when we are more worried about the gospel message being compromised, when we worry about the reputation of Jesus being being misrepresented in the land by Christians, then we have to understand that meekness means that you and I can no longer live with a defensive attitude. We realize that, that, that we have to be people who do not pity ourselves, who don't feel sorry for ourselves because a defensive attitude is not a Christ-like attitude. It is found nowhere in the character of Christ. Defensiveness was never a part of who Jesus was. Can I tell you that being defensive... What being defensive does is it is protecting one's self. By definition, it is made or carried on for the purpose of resisting an attack. So oftentimes when we are defensive, we, are, we go into protection, a protection mindset. We go into this defensive protection. We're trying to defend our reputation. We're trying to defend our standing, our opinion about something. We are protecting ourselves and defensiveness is a result of that protection. But being meek and humble is knowing full well that there is nothing in us that is worth protecting. Isn't that good? To think about it in this way, when we give our lives to Christ, and we realize that we are living in depravity of sin. We realize that there is nothing good in us. We realize that we aren't worthy of being loved. When we understand this, we have in our minds a right view of ourselves. There's nothing good in us. There's nothing worthy in us. In fact, if left without the Holy Spirit, if left to ourselves, we would choose sin every single day of our life. We would choose to walk down the wide path instead of the narrow path that leads to Jesus. We would do this intentionally. It's our natural human bent. It's who we are. In fact, think about it in terms of salvation. In our modern day, seeker-sensitive, seeker-friendly churches, we say things like, come and receive Jesus as your Savior. We say things like, accept Christ into your life. But meekness, meekness says quite the opposite. And that is, I pray that God would accept me, a wretched, awful, sin-sick person like myself. The meek person is one who is amazed that God would think as well as he does about him and treat him with as much mercy as he does. Other thoughts on meekness is this idea of being mild and gentle and lowly. It's living this quiet life. 
1 Thessalonians 4 1 says this make it your goal to live a quiet life minding your own business and working with your hands just as we instructed you before then Peter tells us in 1 Peter 2 21 and 22 he says for God called you to do good even if it means suffering just as Christ suffered for you he is our example and you must follow in his steps it goes on to say he committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. Being meek means that we are willing to learn. It means that we have a teachable spirit. It means that I don't come being filled with me. I come emptying myself of me. Again, that's why it is in the tier of things in the way that the Beatitudes are spelled out. Because first, we need to empty ourselves of ourselves, rid ourselves of everything that is me-centered. And doesn't that fly in the face of this self-care movement that we find ourselves in in the 21st century? This, this self-care, me-centered, me-too movement that we find ourselves in would say, you do you. You act the way that you want to act. You do what you want to do. You behave the way that you want to behave. You deserve. You're entitled. This is the attitude that we carry around. And yet meekness, meekness that we see characterized in the life of Jesus is not that way. We are humble and we are meek. We think very low of ourselves because we think very high of Christ. He is the one exalted above everything else in our life. We go low and he goes further, higher and higher into his rightful position in our life. And so I ask you, is Jesus front and center in your life? Have you put before you Jesus Christ as the living example of the character of meekness? He is the one that we are to learn from. He is the one that we ought to be emulating every day of our life. The meek person always is content and is always satisfied with where he is, with what he's doing, with where God has him. He realizes that I don't deserve anything, that if I actually got what I deserve today, I'd be in hell. I cannot be satisfied with getting what I deserve. I have to praise him and be grateful that I am, I, am, I am called a friend of God, that I am able to be called a child of the Lord. This is huge for us. And again, especially in our modern day churches, when we make following Jesus seem so easy, we make it as something that we actually physically do and we don't do anything. It is the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives to recognize that we are a sinner, to recognize that we are so far from him, to realize that any good that you see in me, any good that you recognize in me that's worth saving, that's worth redeeming, that's worth dying on a cross for, anything in me that is that is all because of him, is all because of what he did and who he was and what character that he's trying to place into my life that I might look more like Jesus. Philippians 4.12 out of the New King James Version, it says this, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be happy and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I think that this is really interesting. This word abased means lower than usual, disgraced, dishonored, humbled, and shamed. And yet to abound means to be in excess and to excel. I know what it means to have nothing. I know what it means to be lost. I know what it means to, to be steeped in sin and be chained to sin. But I also know what it means to abound in my faith. I know what it means to excel. I know what it means to hunger and thirst after righteousness. And that's what I want for my life. And friend, that's what God wants for your life as well. You know, just this past weekend, I witnessed a man come down. He got on his knees before the altar in front of the entire congregation and he worshiped. He worshiped so fully, hands raised, crying out to the Lord, thanking God for who he was, thanking Jesus for coming and rescuing a sinner like him. 
And I remember thinking to myself, you know, there's probably scores of people that could be offended by him, that could be kind of like maybe distracted by him. But you know what? I wasn't. I looked at that man and I, I began to cry and I began to see something in that man that I wish that I had in my own life. You see, I've been a believer my entire life. And so sometimes th this, th these spiritual lessons that we're learning, sometimes I read scripture and I think, you know what? Uh, of course, that's the truth. I've always known that to be the truth because it's become old hat, because it's been something that I have just lived with my whole life, that it, I've almost become numb to it but not this guy. I don't know his story, but I, I'm going to assume that maybe he hasn't been a Christ follower that long because I, something in me believes that he knows what it's like to be rescued from sin and slavery of sin. Something tells me that he recognizes where he was, lost in his sin, lost in his depravity, and now he is found living in the fullness that Christ died for him to have. And he is all about proclaiming that and declaring that with his mouth of, of just praising the Lord for his goodness and wildly doing that, even if it means making a fool of himself among a crowd of people, he's willing to do that. And it's something in me was so taken back by this man. And I said, I want that. I want to live with that kind of faith. I want to live with that kind of determination to praise God, even in the midst of a storm. I want to praise him when I know that he's faithful. And I want to praise him when I do not see him working. I want to praise him when I have everything that I need. And I want to praise him when I am desperate and in need of provision in some way. I want to be that person. And I pray that you do too. The promise for this beatitude by King Jesus was this, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are meek, for they will inherit the earth. And the truth is, they've already inherited everything that they need from the Lord. And they know this. They're living with this gratitude. They're living with this this knowledge and this realization of all that they have been rescued and redeemed from. And this is the way that we honor God. They're living in contentment and satisfaction. Listen, people who are living with meekness, people that are living in humility, people that know what they have been rescued for, they're not waiting for something else. They're satisfied with where God would have them in their life. Friend, I pray that this has been an encouraging message for you today. If it has, would you give it a huge thumbs up? Would you share it with someone you know and love? Also, would you subscribe to this channel? Become a part of this growing family. I would love to have you comment down below and let me know what kind of videos that you would like to see me do. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified for every time that I upload content just like this one. Between now and my next video, friend, I pray that you have an awesome day with Jesus, that you seek after humility and meekness in your life. And I'm praying for you because these are hard truths, but we have every reason to learn them, study them, and seek to emulate them in our life because they are the character of Christ. I love you, friend, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.